Greetings and salutations, everybody. Today, we have an absolutely strange tale, a story that I thought would take off amongst the online left, amongst the race-grifting left. However, they've basically dropped the story because apparently, Black Lives Matter, unless you're a black person that dates a white girl, then you kind of have it coming. We're going to get into this. We're featuring a real video. Hashtag save the real. Yes, we're still on this. But first, our sponsor, get to that, then get on the other side. Our mental health can be affected by our physical appearance. You know that, I know that, and major corporations selling you not very good anti-aging products know that as well. This is one of the reasons why I actually use and I support our long-term sponsor, Health with Justice. This collagen powder is the best. It's absolutely wonderful. You just put one scoop in your morning beverage every single day, and you'll see that itty-bitty baby glowing skin come out look at how much my skin is glowing it is amazing in every possible way that's healthwithjustice.com and you can get 51% off this month only for my viewers only healthwithjustice.com again supporting the sponsors helps support the channel so the story that we're going over today is something that I came across a couple of days ago and I had assumed it was going to be that big national story because what we had here was a triple unicorn case and for those of you who are not familiar with the concept of a triple unicorn case this is essentially a case that is so unlikely and so absurd so uncommon and yet it's given national attention as if it's the norm and this case falls within that because this is a story of a young white woman who is being described both as an instagram model or as an only fans model named courtney taylor who actually killed her boyfriend, which is incredibly rare. Typically, men kill women, not the other way around. And she happened to be white, and her boyfriend happened to be black. Again, also incredibly rare. Interracial crime almost never happens, and if it does happen, it's typically a black person killing a white person, something like 10 to 17 times more likely for that combination than the other way around. Then when you factor in the female aspect of it, you end up with the triple unicorn case, but this is what the media loves to latch onto. This is what they love to declare white privilege because the whole Karen movement in the media is meant to demonize, discredit, and destroy white women in the collective consciousness of the United States of America. However, this story didn't take off. This story didn't gain the traction that I was expecting, and it's not because from the outset it appears that the Miami-Dade police are under the impression that this is a self-defense case. This has never stopped the left wing before. Kyle Rittenhouse had the most obvious self-defense case ever caught on video, and nobody on the left cared. This is due to the fact that this black person very loudly and proudly preferred white women to black women, and he was not shy about saying it. Therefore, he's not deserving of respect or an investigation into the death of him. The man at the center of this is a man called Christian Toby Abumseli, who is of Nigerian descent, and anybody who knows anything about Nigerians knows that they don't typically have high opinions of black Americans. Obviously, this is a not all situation. Obviously, some Nigerians do tend to get along perfectly fine, I'm sure, with black Americans. But I've talked to a number of Nigerians, a number of people of African descent in the United States of America, and this is so common that it's in stand-up comedy sketches, and they seem to have a bigger cultural divide with the black American population than almost any other group in the nation, which is also incredibly interesting, which we could talk about and do videos about later on, but that's not what we're going to focus on. And this person was killed by his girlfriend, Courtney Taylor, and the circumstances are largely unknown. Obviously, the claim from Courtney Taylor is that it's a self-defense situation, but again, it doesn't appear that the investigation has concluded. It's still ongoing, so I don't want to say that he was definitely in the wrong when we haven't had anything official released related to this potential crime. That being said, it has never stopped the left ever from doing a story about this, especially when they can find this little story, this little thing that they cherry picked and claim it is proof of white privilege. So our ladies over at the Real Talk, hashtag save the Real Talk, decided to take on this story. And we're going to review their video because it has such an amazing plot twist that it's just amazing. An alleged <laughs> domestic violence incident turns deadly in Miami, leaving many unanswered questions. According to reports, a white social media model stabbed 
her Nigerian boyfriend to death and was out on bail the very next day. How? Now the so first and foremost, she leads by saying a white social media influencer, white social media influencer, stabs her Nigerian boyfriend, which is interesting that she doesn't use the phrase black, but you'll find out why she's distinguishing the man from black people as a whole later on in this segment. And of course, we catch one of the hows, which gives me permission to play the how compilation. <laughs> So from the jump, you see the setup for this video and you feel like you know what's coming in this video because they're setting it up by saying white social media influencer kills a black man and was released without bail. And by the way, apparently she wasn't arrested. So typically you don't have to put up bail when in fact you're not arrested. Also, the way that this is said comes from such utter, unbelievably stupid levels of ignorance of what's going on in this country because we're having multiple different people, including in my state all the time, being released without bail despite serious crimes. Houston is charging bail to some of the people that are on death row, but that bail for death row inmates is incredibly low, and those people are being released. There was a school shooter in Dallas who shot people in the school, and they released that person the next day. I can bring you millions upon millions upon billions upon zillions of other examples. Yes, I'm exaggerating. Yes, I'm being hyperbolic, but I have a lot of examples of other people, specifically black people, specifically black males getting out with no bail getting out with small bail and those people are actually arrested and actually charged with the crime she was not charged with the crime because it seems like at this point in the investigation the police don't have enough evidence to do so they may believe it is genuinely self-defense at this point so when you hear how <laughs> Just know that that's based on their unbelievable denial of reality and their total lack of evidence. And was out on bail the very next day. How? Now, the family of the 27-year-old man is demanding answers. They want to know if this stabbing was a case of self-defense or something more sinister. Mm -hmm. Sources say the model even posted content on her OnlyFans page the day after the tragedy. That's took crazy. Place. Ladies, what are your thoughts? So I don't know anything about this incident that is not publicly known right now. I don't have any more information or access to any more information than these ladies have. But what I do know is that she was not arrested. So the idea that she was charged some level of bail absolutely makes no sense at all. In fact, what I think they're actually referencing is the $8,000 bond that she paid for DWI or DUI. It's always different depending on the states. Don't kill me over it. That happened in 2020. That is the only mention of bail for this person that was set. And again, that is back all the way in 2020. So that video has resurfaced. People are going through that to assess her character. But the idea that she was released on bail for this makes no sense because, again, she was not, in fact, arrested because right now the police don't have evidence sufficient enough for an arrest. As for the family wanting answers, totally understandable. I completely get that. And as for her posting something on social media... Honestly, I don't know what to make of it. Yes, to me, somebody who is older, somebody who, even though I work on social media, I have my personal life separate from my social media. That is asinine. I would not be doing that after major events in my life. I've taken breaks from this channel because I've had things that went on in my personal life and I've never mentioned it because we don't got that kind of relationship and my life isn't all about the content. Wait, who am I kidding? Yes, it is, but you guys aren't connected to my personal life. This is my job and I don't try to bring whatever's going on in my personal life to this scenario. I keep it separate. Church and state situation. But I'm older than this girl, and I started this whole social media thing older than this girl is currently right now. And this younger generation, these Zoomers, these absolute scumbag Zoomers, live everything online. There's actually a whole webpage that you can find out called Funeral Selfies, where you can see these brats at the funerals of their loved ones, taking photos of themselves in the mirrors, thinking about how good they're looking. Meanwhile, somebody allegedly close to them had passed away. That's the kind of people that we're dealing with. So all this potentially sociopathic behavior might just be what's normal for the previous or the next generation, the generation after, which would make them the next, not the previous. I'm going to edit that out so you guys can't hear it, but you get, you get what I'm saying, even though I'm editing out that mistake. Somebody needs to explain this to me because yeah. I am lost. I don't under, I, I mean, from my perspective, 
it just looks like, how is it that a white girl like this is allowed to get away with murdering a black man? Yeah. I don't think that it would be the same way if it was the other way around Hell at no. all. You're always lost. You're typically the worst person on this show, the least informed person on the show. You never know what's going on, and you often blatantly and indignantly state incorrect information loudly and proudly just to show everybody how little awareness of what's going on in the world that you're talking about. So I'm not surprised by that. But if you need me to explain it to you, hashtag save the real, you're my favorite, by the way, then I will explain it to you as follows. Sometimes when you kill someone and there's not enough evidence for homicide or there's another thing called evidence of self-defense, the police don't make an arrest right away. And sometimes they may never make an arrest in this situation if the evidence of self-defense is clear. Are you following? Do you understand? Can I explain it a little bit better to you? D do you get it? Do you get it? Do you want me to say how? How? I hate it. Hate. 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 From my perspective, it just looks like, how is it that a white girl like this is allowed to get away with murdering a black man? Again, she racializes it. She talks about how, oh, this girl murdered a black man. Again, we don't know that. There's no charges of that. Right now, we're dealing with a homicide investigation. Murder is a specific word that means the intentional, unjustified killing of another human being. So she has no basis for that assertion, thus actually proving out what she said before, which is she has no idea what's going on. Yeah. I don't think that it would be the same way if it was the other way around Hell at no. all. Yeah, I'm not buying this in any way, shape, or form. The idea that if it was the other way around, this would be a national story or it wouldn't be equivalent is absurd in every possible way. Because, by the way, if you guys aren't familiar with this, there are multiple different instances and way more common for black men to murder white women than it is for white women to murder black men. In fact, I could give you a story right now from Miami-Dade County from spring break of a white girl who was on spring break who got drugged, dragged to her hotel room, assaulted, robbed, and then was murdered for no particular reason. They just left her to die after drugging her. That is a felony murder. That's what we're dealing with all the time in this nation. And again, I I chose one that was specifically not ultra violent because there's multiple different insanely violent instances that go on in this nation that we never talk about. Tessa Majors, not getting all that national attention, was murdered by 14 year old black teenagers. One of the teenagers got nine months and this is a teenager that did it. He committed the crime and he got nine months. The parents are outraged. And again, it doesn't bring any national attention. By contrast, a white person arguing with the black person is a national story the reason we know about the central park girl who by the way did nothing wrong christian cooper admitted that he was doing exactly what she said to the police which is why they never charged her or why she was never convicted of any crime and why she's suing him she is a national story she can't get a job anywhere just because she had the audacity to argue with a black man who started an argument with her. That's the state of this nation that we're in right now. Let's be clear about that. So I'm not buying this. Oh, well, if it was the other way, it's the other way all the time and you guys never cover it. Why don't you talk about that? This is the ultimate man bites dog situation, or as I like to call it, it is the ultimate triple unicorn. So don't give me that if we flip it to the other side when people arguing, in fact, Hispanic people arguing with black people are somehow evidence of white racism. And furthermore, even if she was doing this in self-defense, even when you kill someone in self-defense, you absolutely feel that. You you just took a life. A life. You you feel that to some capacity. You're not out grabbing drinks the next day. Right, no. right. Or posting at all. Or posting. At all. That's the part that, that's shocking to me. So again, the social media thing could be down to the whole Zoomer thing. And if you're wondering what we're talking about in terms of her going to get a drink the next day, there is video of a woman who I believe is confirmed to be her at a Miami hotel at the bar having a drink. Now, I don't know if you guys know about this. But if I had to be put in a position where I killed my significant other, whether self-defense or not self-defense, I might need a drink after that. Now, I would probably go to the liquor store and drown my sorrows at home. This girl chose to go out, but there's a good chance that she doesn't understand the weight of the situation that she's in right now. And furthermore, even if she was doing this in self-defense, even when you kill someone in self-defense, you absolutely feel that. You you just took, took a life. Out of life. You you feel that to some capacity. You're not out grabbing drinks the next day. Right, no. right. 
Now, while it is suspicious, it's definitely unusual, and if I were the police, I would be examining her behavior post this situation, examine everything, and I'm open to the police concluding that this was not a legitimate self-defense homicide. I will say, their arguments that grief is perfectly linear and that you're supposed to progress down this path with any bumps is so emotionally immature and ridiculous. Centoya Brown was, you know... Uh, defending herself as well against her abuser when she killed someone at 16 years old and she didn't get this kind of leniency. Centoya Brown, a black girl, killed her abuser in self-defense when she was 16 years old and she didn't get any of this kind of leniency or anything like that. Now, let me go over how dumb this statement is from this woman, who obviously is just lost in the sauce on every single topic that she talks about. First and foremost, the Centauri Brown case took place in Tennessee. This clearly took place in Florida. So we have different states, different applications of laws. Let me just throw that out as the first bare minimum thing you should bring up before you're comparing cases. Number one. Number two, Centoria Brown did not kill her abuser. By all of Centoria Brown's accounts, her abuser was her pimp, who in reality was her boyfriend. She was an underage prostitute, and her boyfriend gave her a gun so that she can rob people or shoot people if she needed to. Johnny Allen is somebody who hired Centoria Brown, who, by the way, was told that Centoria Brown was 18 years old. The reason we know that's true is because Johnny Allen died that night, and Centoria Brown is the only person who could tell us that that's what she told the man he hired her she said that she was not interested in having sexual relations and even though he paid her as a prostitute to do that with him he was like okay fine and he just went to bed at this point centoya brown according to the evidence shot johnny allen in the back of the head while he slept his hands were in this position according to the autopsy and the crime scene photos so he was in a sleeping position when centoya brown shot him allegedly in self-defense according to these girls over at the reel on top of that centoya brown took a shower to wash all the evidence off, all the self-defense evidence, and then robbed Johnny Allen, stole his car, stole a bunch of guns from him, called her alleged abuser, her pimp, to pick her up and sell the things. On top of that, Centoria Brown, and I've played this on this channel before, was recorded on a jailhouse call describing this as an execution. I guess she didn't realize that the jailhouse call was being recorded. So there was a mountain of evidence that Centoria Brown was a cold-blooded murderer. In fact, she is a cold-blooded murderer and there's absolutely no evidence that it's self-defense and anybody who forwards that narrative has never looked into one shred of the evidence related to this case no of course not and we don't know if it was self-defense or something else we right don't. we don't know that but my thing is not only she wasn't even arrested she was detained yeah. she was questioned and then let go like you said if it was the reverse god only knows what would have happened oh, right been and my thing is spot. she if it was the reverse the police would have killed him on the spot if he killed his girlfriend the police would have just murdered him we have no black people in prison i don't know if you know this no black people have ever been arrested ever in this nation for killing white women they've all been killed on the spot by the police these are the arguments that these people are trying to make this is the racial hysteria that they're trying to churn up all because they have to turn every single possible story that they can find into something anti-white. She just lied to you, by the way, about the Centoya Brown case. She was like, Centoya didn't get that kind of leniency. All she did was shoot a man in the back of the head while he slept and then rob him and then say it was an execution and basically set up everything possible for her conviction. How come she didn't get as easy a treatment as this girl who the investigation isn't even concluded, by the way, and probably looks like a self-defense case? I don't understand that. Must be racist. Even said it was mental health. If it's mental health, she could harm somebody else out there. So why isn't she somewhere where she could, you know, get some treatment, be safe herself, also not harm another person? Someone died. I don't get that. Remorse. You didn't get any of that. You're out grabbing cocktails. I'm not sure what this mental health conversation is about. I don't know who said it. I don't know if it was Courtney, a member of her family, or anything like that. And I'm not sure if it was in reference to her going out to the bar or posting on Instagram or OnlyFans post the stabbing or whatever. But I don't believe the context that the Real Talk ladies are emphasizing. That somehow she said it about the killing and the Miami-Dade police looked at her and said oh, you had a mental episode and then you killed him? Well, we're not going to charge you with any crimes because we're the Miami police and we follow the guidelines of white privilege and we can't do that. I just don't buy that. That's nonsensical in every possible way. So it probably and most likely is related to something post the stabbing, not something related to the stabbing because stabbing somebody in a mental situation 
is a crime that would be charged and you would have to go to court and actually use the defense of temporary insanity or something like that to try to beat those charges. Now, with that being said, Lonnie is going to speak and I am going to play Lonnie speaking for you because this is the plot twist that I was not expecting. This is the churn in the story that made this video worth doing. And it's based on the fact that Lonnie is not into what this guy tweeted in the past. Lonnie? Yeah, I, I don't have too much to say about him. Um, there were some past tweets where he ridiculed black women. So I just, I'm just gonna say rest in peace. That's all I have to say about that. Okay. Yes. That is what Lonnie just said on a national television show about somebody who died in a story where they're trying to gin up racial hysteria and anti-white hatred. She just said this guy tweeted some nasty things about black women in the past, so rest in peace. Basically, she does not care about what happens to him because he talked crap about black women. Essentially, she's making the case, if you read between the lines right here, and granted, I am reading between the lines right here, that he basically trashed black women. He said that he preferred white women, and then he got killed by a white woman, so he kind of deserves it. She's basically blaming who everybody on the panel agrees is the victim because he tweeted some things that she didn't like. Okay. That is a hard one, though. That that that's real. That's a hard one yeah. to then reveal this person's past. Yeah. Was and I and I'm sorry that it happened, and I of have course. condolences I to his family. But yeah. you know, it's just it yeah. is what it is. Because justice should be served, and at the same time, you're learning who this person was against the community. That that's the to hard part you right now. Yeah. Trying to speak up for you. Yeah. I also personally don't want the justice system to think that just because he wrote those tweets that other black men's lives are not valuable yes. or that that can be done to them. Justice must be served, but at the same time, he didn't agree with black power and all the stuff that we want to advocate for. So we're not really into this, but that's not even the best part. I mean, this is amazing. The heel turn in this video is stunning. But that woke girl, the one who doesn't know anything, the one who brings up Centoria Brown, tries to interject another point and listen to Lonnie cut off the segment. Okay, I also next. Do, oh, my last two videos were about the real talk being canceled and how we have to fight to save this show and about Katanji Brown Jackson and the way that people say that Clarence Thomas is not a real black person because he's a conservative. Now we have a story that combines those two things where they're saying that this black guy is not a real black guy because he wasn't into black women and it's on the real talk. It's amazing how synergistic the universe is sometimes. And before I go, you guys know that I'm not going to leave you empty handed. I am going to read some of the tweets, some, not all, they'll be linked in the description, that set this woman off. Um, no, I'm not reading that. Yeah, I'm not reading that either. Okay, you know what? I lied. I'm not reading any of these tweets. I'm not getting banned for this. Go go look them up in the description if you want to read it. Not, not into it. Can't, can't do it. Can't do it. Sorry. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. If you liked the video, you can show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support me via the support links in the description box. This has been me talking about this crazy story that the race grifters took and then let go of till next time.